pretty much all of my private tutoring students missed these SAT math questions. Now these are from blue book practice exams, so this is your one and only spoiler alert. Now let's take a look at what makes these questions so challenging and how to solve them. Go ahead and pause the video and try this question on your own first, but let's just go ahead and take a quick look at College Board's explanation. Oh no, God! Okay, maybe not. Instead, let's do things our own way. All we have to remember is anytime it tells us something is a factor of an equation, that means that we are basically looking at a root. So when you think about any sort of quadratic or polynomial, if k minus x is a root, aka a factor, that means it is equal to zero, which means x is equal to k, at least one of the values of x is. So we can plug k in for x, and then we can plug in zero for y. So let's do that. Instead of negative x squared, we're gonna have negative k squared plus one over 29 and k squared equals zero. And if we're trying to solve for n, we probably wanna get rid of k. And what I'm seeing is we could move k over to the right side of the equation here by adding it. So then we have one over 29 and k squared equals k squared. Since k squared's on both sides of the equation, let's just divide by k squared to get rid of it. And then k squared divided by k squared is just gonna be one because anything divided by itself is one, right? So that becomes one. Over here, we're just left with one over 29n. And now all of a sudden, we multiply the right side by 29 to get rid of the fraction and n equals 29, just like that. All right, pause the video and try this hideous circle slash triangle question on your own first, but here we go. So they give us information about a circle that has center coordinates H, K. And because we don't have to solve for H or K, they're just relative points. Let's make it easy and make these points zero, zero. So we've got this point zero, zero, which is C. And then Point A, which had H plus one, since H is zero, this is just one. A plus square root of 102, this is just square root of 102. Let's uh, think it's gonna be like over to the right, one plus uh, square root of 102 up. So somewhere over here, we have this point uh, one square root of 102. Draw our line here, and this is point A. And then B, it doesn't tell us where it is, but it does tell us that ACB is a right angle. So we could go like this way with it, with a 90 degree angle. We could go the other way with a 90 degree angle. Let's just go up and to the left um, just for fun. So that's point B, We've got our right angle here. And then it's trying to ask us the length of AB, right? What the heck is this? That's what we're trying to figure out. So a couple of ways of looking at this, the way that I see it is, if A and B both lie on the circle, let's sort of imagine the circle for a second with center C. If they both lie on the circle and C is the center, that means that CB and CA are both radii. Each of them is a radius of the circle, so they're equal to each other. So that's good to know. And if we have a 90 degree angle and these are congruent, then both of these have to be 45 degrees. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And you should have this memorized, but in case you don't, just pull up the reference. And we know that this is gonna be X, this is gonna be X, and this is gonna be X times the square root of two. So if we can just figure out the length of one of these sides, we can plug it in and get our answer basically. And one way to do this would be to simply use Desmos. Basically, the distance between 0, 0 and 1, comma, square root of 102 is going to be the length of x, right? So if we plug that into Desmos, it will give us the actual value. And we can take this number and then multiply it by the square root of 2 to get our answer, 14.3 something something. Of course, our answer choices are not in the form we'd like, but we could plug them in. So choice A is square root of 206, and boom, we have an instant match. So our answer is choice A, just like that. Alternatively, if you do know the distance formula, this ends up being a nice, clean solution because normally we're gonna have this complicated formula here, but instead, because our first points are zero, zero, we just ignore them. 
So our distance formula becomes the square root of one squared plus square root of 102 squared. One squared is just one. The square root of 102 squared is just 102. So then the square root of 103 is X. And then if we multiply, because remember we're plugging that in for X, square root of 103 times the square root of two with square roots, we can just multiply them straight across. 103 times two is 206. So the square root of 206 is our answer. A couple different ways to solve that one. All right, this percentage question is really just about turning words into math. So let's turn words into math. It starts off by telling us A is, A is means equals, is 230%, that's 2.3 in number form, of means multiplied by the number B. It's also telling us A is, so let's get another equation here, A equals 0.6 is 60% of the number C, C. And then finally, it's giving us this third equation. And this is the one that we're gonna be focusing on because we're solving for P eventually, right? So C is P percent. We could think of that as like point P of the number B. Cool. Now that we have it laid out, you can kind of see that we just need to mess with these two equations in a way that we end up with this equation. So we need to get C by itself in relation to B, we can use substitution to do this because we already have this equation that involves C in relation to A. So if we just substitute this in for A, then we kind of have what we want, right? So instead of A equals 0.6C, we're gonna say 2.3B equals 0.6C. And then we're just one step away from getting C by itself. We just divide by 0.6 on either side, and then we'll get our answer. Now, I don't feel like doing 2.3 divided by 0.6 by myself, so I'm gonna enlist the help of Desmos real quick, and it looks like our answer is 3.83. So, to be clear, C equals 3.83B. And remember, 3.83 is our quote-unquote percent, our point P, and 3.83 is 383%, so that's our answer. All right, pause the video, try this madness on your own first, but here we go. This is all about plugging stuff in. If you are given a point, plug it in, especially if it's a constants question that has more than one constant and you're being asked which of the following must be true, this is clearly not gonna be something we wanna use Desmos for because we're speculating. We're not even talking about an actual value. So plugging stuff in is gonna be our best friend here. Let's plug our point in, zero, negative 24. So instead of f of x, we have zero. a times the square root of, instead of x plus b, it's negative 24 plus b. And let's just sit with this for a second. What does this tell us already? Well, let's think about it. If we're gonna multiply these two things together, a and then this square root, one of them has to equal zero. So either negative 24 plus B is zero or A is zero. Let's consider both of them and see if one of them is maybe just not gonna work. Uh, let's think about A being zero. If A is zero, then every single value is going to be zero because no matter what we plug in, it's gonna become zero. But it tells us that F of 24 is less than zero. So that means A cannot be zero, which means the square root of negative 24 plus B is going to equal zero, which means that negative 24 plus B is going to equal zero, which means B equals 24. And rewind the video if you need to digest that, but let's just settle on the fact that we figured out B equals 24, cool. Now let's plug stuff in again. This time we'll plug in our F of 24 is less than zero. So zero, is going to be greater than a times the square root of, we know that instead of x we'll have 24, instead of b we'll have 24 because we actually know that b is 24. And 24 plus 24 is gonna be some sort of a whole number, right? So now we know that a has to be negative in order for this to be less than zero. So a is less than zero. And it's asking us which of the following must be true well, looking at choice C and D, it becomes pretty apparent that if A is less than zero and B is 24, 
A has to be less than B no matter what. So our answer is choice D. All right, pause the video and try this one on your own first. But here we go. This is all about what are we solving for? Eventually, at some point, if we go to the end of the question here, we know we're supposed to solve for electric flux, right? So in the beginning, it tells us the electric flux of the electric field is the product of the field strength and the area of the surface. So let's just put this down as like the main formula that we need to focus on. We're going to have surface area times strength. That's what we need to focus on. So as we continue to work our way down here, it's gonna mess with us and it's gonna tell us that we have a certain flat surface with two adjacent squares. So let's draw those. And it does tell us that the side length of the large one is three times the side length of the small one. So for now, we could think of the side length of the small one as X and the side length of the large one as three X, right? Now we already know that we're looking for surface area. So let's also express these in terms of surface area. The smaller one is gonna be x squared, and then this is 3x times 3x, so we're gonna have 9x squared for our big one, right? Cool, so everything's looking really nice so far. Uh, as we continue down, it tells us the strength. An electric field with strength 29 volts per meter passes through this surface. Wonderful, our strength can now be replaced with 29. I love it. Furthermore, it tells us that when it passes through this surface, the entire surface that we just drew, the electric flux is 4640. So the answer to this is 4640. Wonderful. Now let's just replace surface area with our actual surface area, which is x squared plus 9x squared, 10x squared, right? And at this point, we could certainly use algebra and solve for x, or we could be a little bit lazy and we could use Desmos. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty lazy. So we had 10x squared times 29 equals 4640. And we could see that our answer for x is four, which is, again, just wonderful. All right, so x equals four. Cool, is that our answer? Uh, not quite. It's saying, what is the electric flux of the field through the larger square? So if x equals four, now we just need to do our little uh, equation again, but this time we wanna use 9x squared, so 9x squared, uh, remember x is four, so four squared is 16. Nine times 16 times our strength, 29, and that should be our answer. Let's again go to Desmos. Nine times 16 times 29 equals 4176. And that, my friends, is our answer. And for some of the hardest English questions on the Blue Book practice exams, check this video out right here.